um, welcome to the midnight edition of MOS Match Week Review. It is currently 12.01 in the evening, and technically I am doing this on a Sunday because, you know, we just passed midnight here. Um, but yeah, I'm doing this now because all six of the games happen on Saturday, and all of them have just finished. Uh, I managed to watch half of the six game. I managed to watch the top row. Uh, the bottom row, I only just watched like the highlights just about a couple of minutes ago. And I also just got back from the Quakes game. Well, what I mean got back, I actually got back like an hour ago. Um, I just watched the... Are basically doing that time like I said I watched the highlights and took a shower and write up the board and set up the camera and just a little kind of spoiler for the match vlog that I'm gonna be doing um, and talk about what happened in that Quake game well we lost one nothing and it was an absolute dreadful performance by the Quakes B team um, it was so dreadful that you know I'm pretty sure those of you that sold your tickets uh, for that game between Club Leon and San Jose Earthquakes, you probably are happy about that because it was not fun. Um, but that's all I'm gonna have to say about that game because if I say more, I'll basically just spoil the vlog. But either way, let's actually get to this because I wanna get this done as soon as possible. I have to do this, uh, upload this video, and then edit my vlog, and have to wake up at 7.30 in the morning tomorrow. And I'll probably get like five hours of sleep. But yeah, let's get to this. Um, we'll start with this one. The Revs take on NYCFC. I actually start watching this in the 33rd minute because I woke up late for this one. Um, goes from Fagundes, Aguilero, uh, Tajari with a brace for NYCFC. And I mean, for the Revs, you could say that this is a game where you, you could... Look at one way you're happy to get a point against the best team in the league right now. But at the same time, you probably are pretty frustrated that you only got a point in this game. Uh, the refs were by far the better team in this game. Especially in the first half, they completely outplay NYCFC. NYCFC, you know, in this game, it was pretty clear that they missed David Villa and Rodney Harris and Alex Ring in this game. Because without them in the pr present, they didn't look like the same NYCFC team that they were a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, you know, they did score a goal early with Diego Fagundes, who, you know, I think he, he would really love to play NYCFC every single week because he always tends to score against them. Uh, I think this is like his fourth or fifth goal against NYCFC. I forgot like the stats that talked about, but there was a stat that talked about how he always tends to score against NYCFC. Uh, but like I said, the Revs are pretty frustrated that they didn't get more out of this because they had a lot of chance in the first half. They also had one shot that came off the post, and it was just a classic case that the Revs just learned that if you don't take your chances against the big boys like NYCFC, you are going to get punished. And Tajari punished them in the 51st minute. It was kind of against the run of plays because the Revs were still pretty good at that point. Uh, they started to get back into it in the second half. Aguilero did get a goal for the Revs, which is his first. And Tajari decided that, yeah, that's good, but I'm going to drop another one. And Tajari, you know... A lot of people usually don't talk about him as a very big threat in NYCFC because he's kind of overshadowed with the the big four that NYCFC had with the likes of Villa, uh, Maxi Morales, Rodney Harris, and also Medina. But Ishmael Tajari has had a pretty decent game in the last two games. I mean, he has scored three goals in the last two games, and who would have thought that you know, for NYCFC, the guy that can potentially be a solution to the missing David Villa is Tajari scoring goals. Um, yeah, that definitely is not expected. Um, whether or not if he can continue this good form that he has, we'll, we'll find out maybe in the next couple of games. But he certainly is a very dangerous threat coming off the bench. Um, and, you know, NYCFC, they're certainly going to be happy to get a point out of this game, considering the fact that they sort of got outplay in this one, but yet they still got a point. And they 
were missing a lot of their starters, which should get back in that game against the San Jose Earthquakes. But yeah, um, meanwhile, moving on, um, FC Dallas and Portland drew 1-1. I'm pretty sure that this is probably the resort that both teams didn't want to see uh, by the end of the 90th minute. Well, actually, for Portland, I think they'll probably be the happier sides to get out of this one with a 1-1 draw, considering the fact that, one, they're the road team, and two, they also got a man sent off in the 75th minute. And the sending off that Portland, uh, Lawrence Olum, who got sent off in this game um, and he actually only got his second yellow card to get sent off he didn't get a straight red for this and I was shocked the fact that the ref did not g give him a straight red for this this incident because this was probably the worst red card sending off that I've ever seen basically what happened was the ball was coming into the box and Ulam basically decided to jump up and he basically tried to punch the ball with his fist to put it into the back of the net I mean that is some sort of hand of god s kind of stuff from alone and he was rightfully so to get sent off although i don't understand why the referee give him a second yellow card he should have got a straight red for that like that was so obvious that that he was trying to punch that ball into the back of the net and i i honestly don't know what was he thinking like you know, I know that back in the 80s when Diego Maradona did that hand of God kind of infamous goal against England, you know, he of course got away with it because there was no technology and there wasn't like a lot of just kind of like, there was no VAR system. But these days with cameras and also VAR available and you still do that? I mean, that is just, that must really drive Giovanni Sarasi incredibly nuts and certainly will drive a lot of Timbers fan nuts in this because they actually were playing very well up to that point um, they didn't have a good first half though um, they went behind with Lamar scoring the goal for Dallas but they kind of got back into the game with Sebastian Blanco scoring an absolute golazo and really a very Iron Robin-esque kind of goal with him just cutting back to the left and basically hitting it from the left um, it was certainly will be one of the candidate for goal of the week uh, but you know they of course eventually got that sending off and that kind of changed how they approach throughout the rest of the game um, but you know for Dallas this has to be very frustrating and this it feels like we're back to square one for Dallas with the fact that it feels like there is going to be once again concerned with this FC Dallas team. I mean, I knew that last week when they play against Seattle and how they beat them 3 nothing, And I said that they need to prove that in this game that they need to not only win this game, but they prove that they can, can actually finally kind of start kicked off their recovery season and their redemption season that they're going to have this year. And this one didn't prove that at all. And, you know, obviously, Lamar, who scored the goal, uh, that is his third goal. It's good that they get him start to score goals. But guys like Maxi Uruti and Mauro Diaz were pretty much a ghost in this game. Well, Mauro Diaz was sort of the ghost in this game because he didn't do much in this one. And Uruti, I honestly don't understand why in the world in this game he d decided to go for a spectacular goal. Like, there was three times this game he's trying to go for a bicycle kick or an over had scissor kick where he could have easily just made a touch and basically trying to spin around the the um, Portland defender and trying to score from there or just pass it to one your teammate why in the world does he keep going for the spectacular goal and all three times he fell miserably with that so yeah I mean for Dallas it is pretty much back to square one they, they the concern of them how this season looks like that that hangover that they had and that just horrible form that they had in the second half of the season is literally carrying into this. And although they have got five points out of those free games, keep in mind, those free games are all at home and all of those free games were easy opponents to I win. Mean, they could have easily got nine points out of this, but instead, they only got half of them and got five points. So yeah, uh, meanwhile, next up, Columbus win 3-1 against DC United. Goals from Valenzuela and Clark 
and Santos. Uh, the only goal for DC United is Assad. And there was a bit of a controversy in terms of this game with the third goal scored by Columbus. Uh, so basically what happened was when Columbus was going on the attack, there was actually a foul. Um, DC United actually was kind of like claiming and kind of asking the ref that that there was a foul that involved, uh, who, who was it again? I think it was Abu Karpo that basically just tried to slide tackle one of the one of the DC United player. And keep in mind, uh, Abu Karpo actually had a yellow card at that instant and have the ref blown his whistle and seen that as a foul, which I think that clearly should have been a foul because he basically just stood up trying to tackle that Columbus player and or not that Columbus player but the DC United player and that should have been a second ye yellow for him he should have been sent off but instead the ref didn't call that foul and it led to an attack for uh, Columbus it was a very good counter attack from Columbus and in the end Pedro Santos of course put away the goal but in my opinion, I really don't think that really makes anything better because Columbus was by far the better team in this game. Um, you know, DC United, they started out well, but then Columbus really grew in the game. And as soon as Valenzuela scored the first goal, um, you know, Columbus was kind of like dominating. Assad goal was really just against the run of play and. Also, I forgot to put Yasmil Assad as one of the goal scorers. He's actually scored his second goal for DC United. Um, but, you know, eventually that DC United defense that has just been hot garbage this season and certainly been one of the weakest in MLS eventually show in these two goals because these two goals were very sloppy goal to concede. But at the end of the day, it's a good point for, um, well, not a good point, but a good three points for Columbus because they didn't drew in this game. Um, it's good three points and another three goals for them. And for DC United, you know, it's, it's I guess, it's back to reality in this game. And, you know, DC so far... This season, going on the road, they have only picked up two points for a possible uh, 12. And it's pretty clear that DC United is going to maybe finish near the bottom of the table. I mean, with the Revs now, certainly started to look like they're playing very well. And DC United are kind of like stumbling right now. Um, it's pretty clear that they could find themselves near the bottom this year. Meanwhile, let, let's talk about uh, this game. The Red Bulls winning 3 nothing against Minnesota. I watch about half an hour into this game. Um, I guess Mill, is that how you pronounce his last name? That scored the first goal for the Red Bulls. And then BWP scoring a brace in this one. And, you know, Bradley Wright Phillips now up to three goals. He is look likely here early in the season to be a golden boot uh, candidate and really for this game the Red Bulls pretty much just dominate this game um, I think in some way this game kind of replicates what happened with the the game earlier this season with, when Minnesota play against San Jose where uh, the Quakes was just dominate the whole game they score three goals and you know Minnesota did kind of come back into the they did try to score a couple of goals in this in late in the game but unfortunately this time they didn't do that like that game when they scored like two goals and made it super interesting when they play against the Quakes uh, but yeah you know this was a very good three points for the Red Bulls and even though they didn't had a lot of their starters in this game guys like Tyler Adams are not in this game the Red Bulls still find a way to win because we know that the Red Bulls have a very good depth chart and they're probably one of the best team in terms of depth in the entire league and for Minnesota it's back to reality I mean you got a back-to-back -back wins in this and certainly it will sort of maybe reflect in my power rankings that I'm gonna do uh, on Monday but yeah it is back to reality for Minnesota and that hopes of getting free in a row yeah, that's going to have to wait, unfortunately, for them. Um, but, yeah, um, next up. Well, this game, right, I actually, when I went went to Avaya Stadium, and when I 
actually got to uh, my seat, or not really at my seat as you will find out in my match vlog, but I basically checked my phone to see what is actually the score of all these two games, and then I checked this game, and I found out that Colorado was up 2 nothing against Sporting KC. And at that point, I was pretty shocked. I thought I was living in a parallel universe where everything just gone completely crazy. And, you know, I thought Colorado potentially might pull a stunning upset in this. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case to be because Sporting KC scored two goals. And for the second time this season, Colorado gave up a stoppage time goal that either lost them the game or avoid them to get all three points in this game. And this time, it was Diego Rubio, who I heard the announcer said that he literally just came on seconds ago, scoring a goal, goal, uh, a equalizing goal in, in injury time. And Gutierrez with another goal. And Felipe Gutierrez has now had four goals and sits atop of the Golden Boot race. I mean, that is just, it's just incredible what Felipe Gutierrez has done with this Sporting KC team. And, you know, he could be an early candidate, and I'm not sure if this is an award, but he could be the best newcomer of the year. Um, he could be the best signing out of every single signing that we had had this season in ML MLS. I mean, he is just, he's just on fire right now and for a guy that before we didn't think that he was a threat in terms of scoring and he's more of a threat of just being a kind of good playmaker you know now that he is scoring goal and the fact that he is also being a good playmaker man he is a very dangerous guy and you know like i said he is certainly going to be potentially an early candidate for newcomer of the year and for Colorado of course goals from Baji and Mason Mason of course scoring his first ever goal in MLS um, you know Colorado of course jumped up to a 2 nothing lead and like the the New England Revolution Colorado probably learned the lesson of not being able to put away your chances against the big boys and that you later would get punished because there was a couple of times where Colorado should have scored that third goal, should have basically put this game pretty much far from dealt over and they didn't do that. Instead, they, they drew in that game and it's a very frustrating draw. I mean, even though they got a point against Sporting KC and Sporting KC has been just red hot coming into this one. They definitely could have got all three points, and certainly this this they if they got all three points in this, this will be a huge morale boost coming into their next couple of games because Colorado is a team that many people didn't think that they're gonna compete this year, and if they really think about competing and maybe trying to surprise everybody by getting close to the playoff spot, this is a game that they they really need to win, and unfortunately they didn't do that. But yeah, finally, in the final game, and this one, I I actually didn't even watch the highlight, but it basically ended in a nil-nil draw. Um, and for the Galaxy, this is a miraculous point that they got over Vancouver. I mean, I'll tell you what, th there was probably 95% for me saying that the Galaxy is not going to get anything out of this. I mean, if you look at the injury and the suspension and the guys that are on international duties in their their squad, um, it is just incredible. Like, they literally have their entire squad just wiped out because of that. And they were basically starting a team full of either guys from the Galaxy 2, which is a, the USL affiliate team, or they're just guys from last season. And I didn't think that they, they were going to get anything out of it because the guys from last season basically was absolute dog shit for the Galaxy and somehow in some way they got a point out of this and for Vancouver this must be absolutely infuriating and absolute, they must be absolutely kicking themselves of not getting all three points because this was a game that they clearly have a good opportunity to bounce back after losing 4-1 to Atlanta and with the way the Galaxy are coming into this game just probably the most banged up team in the league 
the fact that they didn't, they only got one point out of this, I mean, I, I can't believe it. Like, I honestly cannot believe how Vancouver didn't get all three points. Again, just a, just a really horrible Galaxy team with a horrible kind of squad lineup. Um, but, yeah, um, overall, you know, like I said, the Galaxy, this is a huge point. This will definitely uh, be a huge morale boost coming into the LAFC game. And also the fact that now that they have Zlatan, that certainly will really hype up and energize the squad. And, yeah, this LA Derby coming up will be a very, very interesting LA Derby. But... Yeah, that, of course, is pretty much it for all six of these games. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of all six of these games. And, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I will, of course, be doing the power rankings probably on Monday because tomorrow I still have to edit a couple of the vlogs. Um, oh, and by the way, baseball vlog is returning tomorrow. I am actually going to be going to a baseball game, going to a Giants game. Um, I'm going to the Giants t to take on the A's. So yeah, make sure you guys watch out for that tomorrow. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And also Sports Hop Series is returning tomorrow with another new episode. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I, of course, will see you guys next time.